Uh, we know that somebody, uh, H3O plus means acid. Well, acids love protonating things with negative charges. There's no problem protonating something with a negative charge. Okay, so uh, let's see. We're, so then we would get uh, this product over here. Okay, now um, what is interesting about this, well notice that we took this carbonyl and turned it into an alcohol. We took the carbonyl and turned it into an alcohol, so we could think of this as a reduction, because we're losing bonds to oxygen. But this is a more interesting reduction than we did here, because we didn't just turn it into an alcohol, we turned it into a more complicated alcohol. Here we had a carbonyl with only three carbons, and now we have a carbonyl with five carbons. So this is a crucial reaction for synthesis. What do you do in synthesis? You start with simple molecules, and you try to make them into complicated molecules. Or you start with short chains and try to make them into long chains, so this gives us a way to make a new carbon-carbon bond, to add a new carbon to this over here. So that's the real usefulness of Grignard's. The usefulness of Grignard's is that it lets you add more carbons to your chain. So a question would say, if you have this compound and you add a Grignard reagent, what would be the product? And then we would come up with that product. That's right. Or if you were doing a synthesis problem, they might say, how can you come up with this? And you'd have to say, oh, I would use a Grignard to do it. Would we have to show the mechanism of how to do it and we'd come up Or they could give you a mechanism problem. They could say, you go from here to here and show me the mechanism. So there's three different types of problems. Sometimes they give you the starting materials and ask you for the product. And then it's up to you whether you show the mechanism. Sometimes they give you the starting materials and the products and they ask you what's the mechanism that would take you from the starting materials to the products. And sometimes they give you the starting materials and the products and they ask you, what do you need to add as a synthesis to get from the starting materials to the product? Oh, but they always give you the starting material and the product, or just at least always for synthesis or mechanism problems. Okay. Because that's what synthesis and mechanism means. A mechanism problem means ask, putting in the mechanism that it takes to go from the starting materials to the product. But they would never just give you like that OH mm -hmm. thing and say, "How do you get this?" Without oh, they starting. might, but that wouldn't be typical. Usually, they say, "How do you get this?" Well, from this. Is it, yeah, they'd have to say from this because then yeah. you, can't you get that it? in like 45,000 different ways. Right. Okay. Yeah. So, um, yeah. Like generally protein speaking, protein. they ask you how do you get this product from this starting material? And then you have to add, you have to say what other reagents you would have to add. Okay. Okay. But before we can think about all those problems, we have to master the basic uh, reaction. Okay. So. There's other things you can add besides a Grignard reagent to get there, right? Or in this well, situation, if you want to add a new carbon chain, you basically has to be a Grignard, or this could also have been an alkyl lithium. Or a lithium. So this is what's called a Grignard, and this is called an alkyl lithium, for pretty obvious reasons. It's an alkyl chain and a lithium. Technically, Grignards have to have magnesium and a halogen on it. Um, so this is an alkyl lithium over here. So this is alkyl lithium. This is the Grignard. These are both organometallics. Organometallics. Yeah, all those names should be logical. They're both organic compounds with metals, okay. right? They're both organometallics, um, but only one of them has lithium. So only one of them would be an alkyl lithium. Um, and Grignard reagents are reagents with the magnesium and a halogen. Um, the names are not too crucial, though. The crucial thing is that these both react the same way. You can treat both of these as ionic bonds with the metal. You can treat it as an ionic bond with the metal, so you can imagine there's a negative charge on the carbon. And then you treat that carbon as a nucleophile. And, the main and one of the main things to do with that is use that nucleophile to attack a carbonyl. So we also learned here, so we've learned about a new type of nucleophile and a new type of electrophile. The new type of nucleophile we've learned about is carbons with a negative charge from bonding to a metal, like a Grignard or an alkyl lithium. And the new type of electrophile we've learned about is a carbonyl carbon. The new type of electrophile is a carbonyl carbon. This shouldn't surprise us, though, because it's still a carbon with a partial positive charge. Okay, so an alkyl? The alkyl lithium the same as an organo lithium? Uh, yeah, that's not that standard a term. But yeah, I uh, guess yeah, so. Organo just means carbons. Organo just means carbons. So an alkyl just means carbons. Um, okay, so then you know how for the last midterm we learned like radical bromination and mm -hmm. like cracking and stuff. On this midterm, I know like they could give us a product and this could happen to have like a BR attached to it at the end, mm -hmm. right? In which case then you would then do radical bromination to add right. a BR to it. Would they be like 
would they do that on this midterm? Or? Yeah. So you might certainly have to use radical halogenation to introduce uh, a halogen. So we have right. to, that would be a synthesis. So we have to remember that. Yeah. yeah. The, the class is cumulative. Is yeah. Synthesis of hexane starting from one bromo propane. So you're going to have to connect the one bromo propane to the hexane and then get the new thing in. We probably just shouldn't sleep. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, let's see. Well, actually, I didn't realize that you guys had already covered all this material, so I thought we were okay, but this is a whole big new set of material right here that we're just getting started in. So, um, so I thought you were in good shape because I looked at the sample exam, and there wasn't all this stuff on the sample exam, but um, uh, I think this is in your notes. And and in your homework, uh, yeah, so that, that's, not a, that's not so much of, a, uh, of stuff. But anyway, we should just keep pressing forward with this. Okay. We haven't really finished this, so... Okay, so um, we've seen here how to work uh, with these uh, Grignard reagents. So uh, let's see the important points to make here. Okay, so we need to summarize the reaction we just went through. So does everyone agree this is the reaction that we just did, right? Okay, uh, in, uh, in summary, um, so here's the carbon that used to be the carbonyl carbon. Maybe I'll put an asterisk here so you don't lose it. Here's the carbon that used to be the carbonyl carbon. Um, so what happened here, how, where did this ethyl group come from? Well, this ethyl group here has this negative charge, so it came in and attacked the carbonyl. I'm not showing the mechanism here because I just had it on the board a second ago. I'm just showing the starting materials uh, and the products. Um, and then where did this um, uh, where did this hydrogen come from? It came from the H3O plus. So by the way, uh, yeah, so it came from the H3O plus. So what would the product have been if, if they never added the H3O plus? If they never added the H3O plus, then this would be the product, maybe with the magnesium as a counter ion. So usually when you're doing this in a practical lab situation, you don't you want the alcohol. So usually you would add the H3O plus, but it would be a good exam question to leave the H3O plus out, and then this would be the product. All right, um, so if we just oh, so did this. Would, in the question, they would tell us we have H3O plus? Depends on the problem. There's many different types of problems uh, that you might see. Um, sometimes you have to come up with the reagents. Sometimes they give you the reagents. But we would know that we either, they would either tell us that we want an alcohol or not, right? They would, they would give you some clue like that, okay. yeah. Okay. So anyway, um, with these reagents, you would end up with this. But then if you also add H3O plus, or maybe even just water, even just water by itself might be enough because this is negative, but usually people say H3O plus, um, then this would protonate. All right, now here's something we should talk about. Uh, what, what do these numbers here mean? First step, first step, second step. These means these are separate steps, right? That means first you add this reagent, you wait for the first reaction to finish, and only then do you add this reagent. So um, that's totally different right. from this. These mean completely different things. This means that we add them together, and this means we add them separately. All right, well notice I didn't write it like this. I wrote it like this. I said you have to add them separately. Why? Why would it be wrong to add them together? So let's go through that. Let's see where we can add them together. What would happen if you added these together? Well, remember that in this step, you're adding something acidic, right? This really means a, 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 a good acid plus water. This is just code for a good acid plus water. Um, well, wh what happens when we have a good acid? It wants to protonate. Yeah, it'll protonate somebody. Well, if we had added these to this, who would get protonated? Carbon. This would get protonated, right? But that's not what we want to happen, right? That would just destroy our Grignard over here. So this is actually a pretty important point. You have to keep Grignards away from acids or it'll destroy them. You got to keep, you even have to keep your Grignard away from water because even the water is good enough to protonate this. So we're assuming that when we do these reactions in the lab, we have whatever reagents we want to add into it. Yeah, pretty much. Well, you would certainly have um, uh, mineral acid and water. You definitely would but have like this. But like we also so. had like PCC and like... 
uh, if that's necessary. Yeah, so generally speaking, if it's, uh, uh, you can uh, assume that you have the standard reagents. That's yeah. right. Okay. Uh, all right, so this is an important point. You have to keep Grignards away from acids, and even you have to keep them away from water, because even water has protons that can protonate a Grignard. Um, so if you're going to use a Grignard, you have to add any protons after you've done the main reaction. So this would be wrong. You might get no credit for this. You have to put in the separate numbers here and do this in two separate steps. This has to be done in two separate steps um, in order to get this. Now, so let's say we do it this way. So what would be the product here? So this would be the product, right? 